Oh, hi. Have you recently met someone and are starting to suspect that maybe they're either a physics or engineering student? Or maybe you've known them for a while and they told you but it was a long time ago and now you can't remember which one it is. Well, don't worry, you're not alone. Today I'm going to be giving you three tests to determine which one they are without actually having to ask them. And there will also be bonus information regarding the math major. Let's get started with test number one. The first test is to pretend that you have some physics related problem. Once your friend asks you what the problem is, you start by giving them very specific numerical values, like an initial velocity of 26.3 inches per millisecond, or a density of 1.609 grams per centimeter cubed. The less you use SI units, the more conclusive the results. If your friend looks excited to use numbers to solve a problem, they are not a physics major, they are an engineering student. However, if your friend looks visibly annoyed with the idea of having to use numbers to solve a problem, instead of keeping things in variable form, they could be a physics major or this could be a false positive because this is exactly how the math major would respond also so we need to move on to test 2 for further confirmation. The next test is a simple but powerful one and it is to just sound unsure about literally anything. Anything will do. The moon orbits the sun or comic Comic Sans is a good font. You see, the engineering student will explain it to you no matter what. Regardless of their degree of confidence on the subject, they will give you a conclusive answer because they need to respond quickly in order to feel safe. It is a defense mechanism. And then the physics major acts in a very similar way, but with one key difference being the reaction time. You see, the physics student is going to want to take some time to establish what assumptions they're making, but not for the sake of careful problem solving. This is actually yet another defense mechanism. This way, the physics student can say something like, well, if those assumptions were valid, then I would have been right. But then lastly, with the math major, they will say absolutely nothing and pretend not to know until they have 100% proved it for themselves. Themselves. The math student is a very docile and passive breed until agitated through overconfidence in one's own level of rigor. That's when they are the most dangerous. The final test is to mention at some point how much work you have to get done. And depending on your comfortability with confrontation, you should supplement this with mentioning also how difficult and challenging that work is. Now, both of these comments will trigger the engineering student and the physics major, but both comments to different degrees. So with the trained eye, a distinction can be made. The engineering student will hear you mention how hard your work is and will feel challenged. Symptoms often include taking off their orange or yellow sunglasses with the bottom part of the frame missing and clenching of the jaw. You see, what they learn is often more tangible and easier to communicate why it's difficult than the physics major, so you may hear something like, I have to account for friction and air resistance and efficiency and the strength of my material. So it'll be very easy to spot the pure rage building up in their eyes after that comment. The physics major, though, is a bit different. Things like abstract vector spaces mean nothing to most people, so giving the difficulty argument is just an uphill battle, so instead they will focus on the quantitative. I have more work to do. My homework was 10 pages long. And then they'll immediately follow that by assuring you that everyone else in the class also had that much work and they weren't just overcomplicating things. So the engineering student will be more triggered by how hard you said your work is, and the physics major by how much work you said it was. Now, if all else fails and you still don't know what kind of entity you're working with, they will pick up on it and they will tell you, they need to tell you, they need you to know. Math majors, they don't really care. They're a different breed altogether and frankly, they're beyond the scope of this video. However, I hope I've shed some light on how you can find out whether your friend is an engineering or physics student. Did these tests work for you or did you have to improvise one on your own? Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys there.